Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is critical process parameters, critical quality attributes, and critical to quality specifications. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. Check out the status bar below for our agenda. Stick around to the end for our bonus questions. Our topic, critical process parameters, CPPs, critical quality attributes, CQAs, critical to quality specifications, CTQs, is covered directly by 1345 sections 7.3.4, 7.5.1, 8.2.5, and 8.2.6. CPPs, CQAs, and CTQs in five words. Most important product process specifications. When we are designing any regulated product, it's important that we understand we utilize risk management to understand what the most important product and process parameters are for that product. Over the next couple of minutes, I'm going to give you my definitions for these three different types of parameters. While some regulations around the world may reference CPPs and CQAs, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what you call them. You have to know what they are and you have to be able to present them to someone external from the FDA, from some regulator in the EU. You have to present what are these critical parameters for your product and for your process. I will give you a good example here. If someone external to your company, a regulator, say an FDA investigator asks, what are the most important characteristics for this product? What are the most important specifications? If your response is, they're all important, guess what? You fail. Because if you treat them all the same, then none of them are really critical or none of them are important because you're treating them all the same way. So let's get into it. CPPs, critical process parameters. These are those process parameters that you know through process development, through testing, through various other types of activities, you know that these process parameters have a direct impact on the safety and effectiveness of your product, your medical device. These critical process parameters, they need to have strict monitoring and controls implemented on them. Let's jump over. Critical quality attributes. Well, these are the most important specifications for your product that have a direct impact on, again, safety and effectiveness of that product. So you want to know what the CQAs are for your product so that you can, again, implement stricter monitoring and controls during manufacturing. But also, when you have deviations later, you understand how much risk is involved based on the identification of that specification as either a CQA or a CPP. And then finally, there's this catch-all term that you will hear a lot if you're working in classic quality-based industries. CTQ, critical to quality. So critical to quality specifications, these can be product or process. But for this video today, I'm going to say that these CTQs are made mainly for raw materials, subassemblies and components. So they're at a lower level. We're at the higher level. We have CPPs for our process. We have CQAs for our product. Then when we go down into our drawings, our raw material specifications, subassemblies, all of these other different lower level products, materials, components, we have CTQs. What are the most important specifications for this raw material? We need to know what those are. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you call them. What matters is that you are you know what they are. And when someone asks you, you can show them documented evidence that you did the risk management. You identified those critical specifications, those essential design outputs. And those essential outputs were transferred into manufacturing. They were transferred to the supplier. You have tighter controls, everything that goes along with that. So how do I know this is working? First, 
I've identified CPPs, CQAs, CPQs for my product, my process, and my materials. Second, those CPPs, CQAs, CTQs, they're documented within my quality system. They're identified on my documentation. Third, I maintain the importance of those CPPs, CTQs, CQAs when I transfer the medical device from the design into manufacturing. And then if I transfer it to external parties, to suppliers, contract manufacturers, the importance of those specifications goes along through each process. They're treated differently. They have higher controls. And then finally, I don't allow deviations to process parameters that are CPPs. I don't allow deviations to CQAs, and I don't allow deviations to CTQs. How do I know it's not working? First, I don't know what my CPPs, CQAs, or CTQs are. I treat every specification the same. Remember, they're all important. They're all important, none of them are important. Second, I have no documentation to show what my CPP, CQA, CTQs are. Third, I treat everything the same. And then finally, I allow deviations on critical process parameters. I allow deviations on my CQAs, my CTQs. If that's happening, you're not really managing your medical device appropriately, you don't have the right risk management in place, you don't have the right process control. And now for the three bonus questions. How do we identify those product, process, material, specifications that are essential to the safety and effectiveness of our medical device? Second, what do we call these specifications? We have a specific name or do we use CPP, CQA, CTQ? And then finally, for this selected product, can you please show me the CPPs, CQAs, CTQs? Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Send any questions to me at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained, making quality systems simple for you.